The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and to offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I'm an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did not come out, he could when he did come out, he could not speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, He went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. The Lord be with you. you. Loving and gracious God, awaken our hearts to your good news, which you proclaim to us over and over and over again. Open our hearts to the hope anchored in your good news for our lives and help us to dare to trust and to live. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to these words and see if you have a memory of some words like this. Oh, I hope she'll go out with me. Or maybe it's, oh, I hope he will notice me. Or maybe it's, I hope that I will get the Zuru Pets Alive Poppy the Booty Shaken Pug for Christmas. It's on the most popular toy list this year. Or the Lego Marvel Avengers Endgame Final Battle. That's a mouthful. 
Maybe it's one of those, you're hoping for something, or you, I hope I'll get that job. I hope she'll be okay. In our culture and in our language, we use the word hope sounding more like the word wish. I wish she would go out with me. I wish he would notice me. I wish I would get this job. I wish she will be okay. I wish for the Zuru Petzolai Poppy Bop 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 or the Lego Marvel Avengers toy. We use the word hope as though it is a wish. But guess what? That's not how the Bible uses it. I, I found the best little description of it in the, the newer version of the HarperCollins Bible Dictionary. And it, it simply says, Biblical hope is not normally expressed as a desire, parenthesis, something good one would like to have happen, parenthesis, but rather as an expectation, parenthesis, something good one knows will happen and so anticipates, parenthesis. Hope is the expectation of a favorable future under God's direction. So think about that for just a moment. Think about that in regards to what hope really is. Hope is not a wish. Biblical hope is not a wish. Biblical hope is a, an expectation based on who God is. We know that God is like this. Therefore, we hope. We expect. We know it will be okay. So just a moment ago, I read this long passage. Many of us may skip this passage when we read Luke because we, we really like getting to the Christmas story. But this is part of that story too. It's a story of a righteous man and woman, Zechariah and Elizabeth. Zechariah is a priest. He has a, a function in the religious life of the people. At that time, there may have been some 18,000 priests in Israel, that people who were called upon to do duties at the temple. And Luke makes it clear to us that they are righteous, meaning they lived up to God's expectations. They lived according to the Ten Commandments and all of the regulations. They were people of faith, people who trusted and believed in God. Yet there's also another reality. They didn't have any children. This was in a time where children were clearly understood to be a blessing of God. And if you were married and did not have children, then there was something else there. It wasn't just that you didn't have children, but that you were maybe outside of God's blessing. There was a sense of disgrace or shame and hardship. This is what this couple has been living. And when we see the word barren, you can translate that sterile. It's a harsh reality in those days. Still a harsh reality for some today. So we have this description. A priest, his wife, they're faithful, yet they have no kids. And they're living their life still seeking to be faithful to God. Zechariah gets called up. His group of priests are now called to the temple. They're now doing their service. And they cast lots. Zechariah. It's your turn to go into the altar of incense, which is just outside of the Holy of Holies. It's still a restricted area. And he goes in to make this offering of incense, to light the incense at that altar. And while he's in there, you heard what happened. A messenger of God is standing there, Gabriel. Don't know about you, I think for myself, if I came in here and Gabriel was standing on the right side of the altar, even if he were on the left side of the altar, I'm going to fall out. It's just going to happen. <laughs> Yet here he has this amazing experience with an angel of God. And this angel's proclaiming all good news. God has heard your prayer. God knows what you've been going through. God has a plan. God has something for you beyond the limitations of what the world might say. 
And Zechariah's response, um, how's this going to be? Have you seen Elizabeth? She's getting a little long in the tooth. I mean, he's stuck with the realities of what he knows, and he's struggling with what God is saying through the angel. And so, of course, we know he's made mute. He can't talk. He comes out. Now, one of the fun things about this little story is to understand that he comes out, he can't talk, and they don't send him home. No, he has to stay at the temple until his group's duties are done. That's a little weird. And then he goes home, and then it all starts to play out. Elizabeth becomes pregnant. She went through the five months of seclusion, which was a cultural thing at the time. And then she makes that statement about what God has done for her, that God removed that disgrace. Now, we're talking about the parents of John the Baptist. Now, we can relate to John the Baptist because we may know that guy a little bit better in the Scriptures. He's the one who prepares the way for the Lord Jesus. But what we're going to look at today is Zechariah and Elizabeth and the hope that they dared to live in. Even though their world told them there was disgrace, even though the world told them that they were not parents, even though everything they could see gave them that impression and that understanding, God was not yet done. They trusted in a God who could change and would change the future. A God who was not completed with everything in creation, but was yet active and present. That's hope. Hope is trusting that God can and will do more. That God is engaged with us in this world, and we live our lives trusting in this God knowing there's more yet in God's hands for us. We haven't seen yet all that God will do. You see, hope reforms how we look at our lives and how we look at the world. Hope calls us and draws us into the yet unseen future, not with questions of doubt, but questions of anticipation and expectation. One of the places you see this is when a saint of the Lord becomes deathly ill. The number of times I've walked with folks who have gone through that difficult scenario, and there is this inner joy that simply grows as they're trusting that God is not yet done. The numbers of times that I've heard folks who are nearing death who are talking about seeing Jesus and ready for, even though they don't want to leave this world, leave the ones they love, but are so ready to be with God. That's hope. Hope in the midst of suffering and brokenness and hurt. Hope in the ending of dreams, but hope that carries them past that. That's biblical hope. This is the hope given to us in and through Jesus Christ. We have been made right with God. Our relationship with God has been made solid and true on God's own doing in Jesus for us. As we trust in Jesus, we can live through whatever we're facing in this world. Paul talks about endurance. Endurance makes character. Character creates hope. And hope does not disappoint. And it's based on what God has already done, on who God is. We can trust in this God who loves us and will not let us go. And we can live with hope. Hope that God is yet acting, moving, shaping, creating the future. We can live today with whatever the scenarios are that we live, 
if we're suffering with health difficulties or financial difficulties, relationships that are not in a healthy place, if we're struggling with depression and anxiety and fear, we still can live in hope as we trust in this Jesus. This Jesus who has walked among us and gives us salvation. I invite you as we are waiting, wait in hope. Dare to lay before God your fears, anxieties, your worries, whatever they may be, and dare to hope because God loves you and God is not done. Amen.